thank you so much for being here. And let's just jump in. So my first question is gonna be really easy. What sparked your interest in championing 5G for found, in founding the Congressional 5G Caucus? Was it the prospect of what 5G can do for the Indy 500? Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> as you were talking about the race and everyone who were racing and competing here, we are getting close to the month of May. I wore my black and white uh, because that is what, how many of you have ever been to the Indianapolis 500? Okay, it is the world's largest spectator sporting event. Incredibly cool. Uh, it's the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. I strongly encourage you to go there. Um, it, uh, talk about racing. It's really incredible and really hope you check it out someday. Um, but I will tell you that I was really thrilled when Indianapolis was named uh, one of the first test, test sites for 5G with AT&T, um, one of only a couple of cities in the country. And I have to be honest, um, I am like uh, a lot of my colleagues, and you probably saw this during the Zuckerberg hearings, um, we're all learning. Some of us didn't grow up um, with all of the technology and all of the innovation. I am one of those people that uh, watched the Jetsons. How many of you watched the Jetsons? Okay, yes, good. There are a few of you. The, for the rest of you, please check it out because uh, what what we watched when I was growing up is now part of our reality. I mean, from the robot dog Astro, you know, we've got uh, things that uh, George and Judy and the Jetsons were doing that we could only imagine, and now we're doing it. And we're doing it, and I think we're at even that point where a lot of things, I, I kid you not, we all need to go back and watch the Jetsons because you all will see, okay, oh, we haven't thought of that yet. but. Um, we really have to win this race. It is about America leading in the country. Um, Indianapolis has always been one of the most innovative cities in the country. In large part, um, Mayor Luger was one, or Senator Luger was one of our mayors. Uh, Steve Goldsmith, one of the most innovative mayors in the country, uh, who now is at Harvard. I was a deputy mayor for him. We were always about innovation, and have always been about innovation. I say that we've spent the last 10 years connecting everyone, and we're gonna spend the next few years connecting everything. But the Congresswoman is right about bringing up Indianapolis, but it's, it's not just Indianapolis, it's also Indiana um, that is leading this race because as you said, the state passed a small cell reform and Indianapolis both streamlined permitting processes and they set reasonable fees for these 5G networks to roll out. Um, I love this example because it shows that when the cities and the states and the operators all partner together, we can provide better service and that it really can work. And so good action, it, it profits the city. So I guess I'm curious, what are you seeing in Indianapolis kind of as a result of these terrific laws and now the companies moving in and investing? Well, I think, um, you know, all cities um, compete to keep jobs in their communities as well to as and expand jobs and to bring more jobs um, in to their state and into their communities. And I have to tell you, um, having broadband, having wireless, having the connectivity that that is demanded now, particularly, um, you know, the young people absolutely live on their phones. All of us, I'm in hearings now, and everyone's living on their phones. I'm sure a lot of you look at this. Having yes, that they are. Supercomputer. <laughs> but we encourage uh, that, y'all keep doing yes, it. Yes, I know. Uh, but, but having that supercomputer right there in your hand, it really is just changing everything. And so I think our city knows, Indianapolis, uh, we don't have oceans, we don't have mountains, um, but it's an incredible city, a very vibrant city. We've been kind of the amateur sports capital of the world. Um, we have a lot going on, but in order to attract those young people and to keep people there and to keep this innovation going, um, 5G is critically important. Um, we are the new, uh, fairly new, they've been there a few years, but we are, we're Salesforce. Um, it, it, their second headquarters is now in Indianapolis. Um, we made it into the, you know, list uh, of 20 communities for Amazon's next headquarters. Uh, you know, but there's a, so much entrepreneurial um, action going on there. Um, we have a lot of uh, what we call um, a lot of incubator spaces that have really taken off in a huge way. And we just have an incredible amount of innovation and we reward that, we reward that entrepreneurial spirit, but you've got to have, um, you've got to have the connectivity to do it or we will lose, we'll lose the battle. So um, just to put some metrics on it for everyone, 
There have been 80 small cells from one carrier alone in Indianapolis, and they are getting speeds of 800 megabits per second today, which is 40 times the average. So not only are you getting good connectivity, it's causing, um, it's causing great new jobs. As you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, we've done some studies that actually can take the amount of jobs that are going out to the locality. And in Indianapolis alone, 5G promises 8 thousand new jobs. So I think it's great to talk about how wireless really does create jobs. It absolutely does. I will say that something that we have to continue to focus on though, and I want to you know, thank all of you and the people who work for you in government affairs, we have to keep educating. Keep educating local city council members, keep educating state legislators, um, because, uh, and you know, I was educated, my team Mimi Strobel is here, um, and I want to thank all of you who come in and visit with staff to, because they educate us. Um, and so don't underestimate the value of getting in and meeting with all those local government officials. Don't assume they understand your world. Don't assume uh, they understand what is needed. Um, we have, I still think, a long way to go to, you know, to educate and communicate gov with government officials. And you know, CTIA does a great job with that. So thank you. Oh, Got to keep that up. Thanks. No, but you really do. It's that important. This is not stuff that you know people are. I think um, you know picking up the newspaper, and that's not the first thing they might go to reading these stories. And so that's why. It takes that education. And so while our legislators were getting it, there was even a little bit of pushback in Indiana from other communities that weren't sure, didn't understand it, weren't sure why they needed to be in the game. Indianapolis got it right away, but we're also doing a lot by educating our smaller cities and our smaller communities. I'm glad you mentioned that because I think we talk about it and people suppose that it's just important for large cities, but we should recognize that it can really help rural communities and keep them together on everything from education to healthcare opportunities. In fact, um, I think we're looking at over $305 billion in healthcare savings and, and really helping rural communities be part of our healthcare system, which I think is personally really important. Um, I think we ought to talk about how we actually get there. Um, I mentioned in my opening remarks that we're actually third right now in the race to 5G behind Korea and South, and Korea, South Korea and China. Um, our industry was actually ranked number one. It's our um, spectrum readiness that pushed us down the chain there. Um, so I think the two core areas that the US really lags behind is both in spectrum and in infrastructure. I guess let's talk about infrastructure reform first because I think, again, Indiana has been such a leader. Before you go there, can I tell the, the um, audience a story? And this is a true story. Um, as a member of Congress, I had not been in my state legislature. I'm an attorney. I had been um, uh, with my state's community college system as general counsel. I've been U.S. attorney. But my very first constituent meeting with an advocacy group was um, by the broadcasters. And they came in uh, to my Indianapolis office at the time and brought out a big graph a big of the spectrum. I didn't even know what spectrum was. Okay, I'm sharing this with you because this was in 2013. It wasn't anything that had ever come up in my campaign. They came and, and sat down and began to explain to me what the spectrum was. And so I'll be forever grateful to broadcasters. And I just share that story because it, it has helped me um, as I you know, tried to learn more and more about what we need. So well, I, I was going to start with that. infrastructure, but I think on that note, we should start with airwaves. So guys, not only is she co-chair of the 5G caucus, she is also a co-sponsor of the Airwaves Act, which really is the roadmap for our spectrum future for the next decade. Um, it's really the critical blueprint. And so we are grateful for your co-sponsorship. I guess, how do we get all your friends on this bill? <laughs> well, again, and I, I just want to thank you. I don't know how many people have signed on uh, today, mm -hmm. but it really is about getting out there and educating. And Energy and Commerce, the committee that I'm on, I'm really proud to be a part of that. Uh, Greg Walden is an incredible champion of your industry and so knowledgeable. I think Leonard Lance and Doris Matsui are leading 
I think it's Doris, are leading on that. It's important for it to stay bipartisan. It is important for you all to continue to educate our members and their staffs about the importance of getting on this bill. We know, I saw your agenda today. Wow, congratulations. Um, you know, having Ajit Pai and all the senators here and all the incredible speakers that you're going to have, it's important for us to get to that auction in the fall. The, the amount of funds that came in from the original, from the, from the last auction were unbelievable. I think far more than was expected, and it's important that we get this right. And, um, and so that's what this Airwaves Act is going to do. It's going to get us to that uh, spectrum auction because you all have to have that access. And um, hopefully our colleagues will get on that. We're dealing right now with some other priorities at Energy and Commerce. Um, completely unrelated, but I just came from an incredibly um, powerful hearing focused on the opioids where we heard from family members who've lost kids to the opioid crisis. And so that's kind of where we're focused right now as we need to be, but, um, but I know that this is a top priority for Greg Walden, so we're gonna get this done. Thank you for that. I Thank you for so. your dedication to that. I do think um, I'm going to tie this into opioids. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one of the the things about one of the important things that's often overlooked in the airwaves bill is that it has this dividend of 10 yeah. percent that we can give back to build out rural areas. And I think if we give rural areas more chance with broadband, then maybe we can avoid some of the opioid crisis that was going on. I think at the last two auctions of this 10 percent. Had been, had been invoked, then that would have been $6 billion in funding. That's a significant amount of money. So I think that um, we need to recast airwaves as a rural broadband bill. Um, and I think that's something that's really important in closing the digital divide. It's really important. And so while I started out talking about Indianapolis, um, very proud to represent Indianapolis, actually the upper two thirds of my district are rural. It's rural communities. And so many members represent primarily rural communities. Um, and so we do have to remember uh, the challenges they have. We cannot have the digital divide and those kids not being able to learn the way kids in the cities and suburbs are learning. We, they have to have that access and connectivity for healthcare. I am really proud of one of my small rural communities called Elwood, Indiana. It's the home of Red Gold Tomato for any of you who you know love your tomato products. Um, it's a great company, but Elwood um, was the first in my district to start with telehealth. And it was incredible to go there and see this middle school and a school nurse who was connecting kids um, you know, to a doctor um, in the nurse's office so that they could do that checkup, help that parent not have to get to school for the sore throat and you know, get that prescription written. Um, and they also are actually doing uh, mental health visits um, with kids at Elwood uh, so that they're, you know, they can have those follow-up visits. And so there are so many opportunities, I think, for technology to improve the lives of people in the rural communities. Let's not forget them. Even though we're focused so often on the larger urban areas, and I appreciate that because that's where most of your customers are, we cannot forget how important all those people are out in our rural communities. And in Indiana, we're huge in agribusiness. And agribusiness is big, big business in the state of Indiana. That also requires all that connectivity, including to like those big massive tractors they occasionally put me on uh, to show me all the technology. And if any of you have never been in one of those big tractors, I highly encourage you to do it. It's amazing what they can do. These days, I did almost run into a building, um, but uh, they, it stopped it with technology, thank goodness. Um, but, uh, but we've got to make sure that our rural uh, and you know, the rural citizens in this country are not left behind. So um, airwaves, will help rural Please. we should we should move airways Let, let's look at all different ways that we can because in fact in this this um in this report that was just released on the global readiness uh the thing that really struck me is that china's committed over 2000 megahertz per carrier so um we need we need to get busy um but speaking of busy um let's go back to infrastructure i think you know we do need infrastructure reform at every level um, the word infrastructure is even boring. How do we how do we bring some fire back to the <laughs> emphasis that we need for infrastructure reform? New rules for these new small cell buildouts. No, I think uh, you're right. There was quite a bit of momentum a, a couple of months ago, um, but I, I hope we will get back to it. Um, and I was thrilled to see that. 
infrastructure didn't just include you know, what we all think about. We have, unfortunately, a huge number of potholes in Indianapolis right now, um, as a lot of communities do because of the weather this year. It's been incredibly unusual. But people think of our roads, our bridges, our ports. They often do not think of, uh, you know, the technology infrastructure that is, is critically important and what 5G can do. And so um, I think, again, we, as we are so excited and celebrating the passage of tax reform and all of the jobs that's creating in order to keep up with this race for jobs and to keep our country globally competitive, we've got to stay connected. We have to have the infrastructure that does allow us to continue to connect. And so I would keep the focus on global competition. I think that's something that both sides of the aisle do understand and appreciate, um, but it's global competition for jobs, global competition to keep companies here here, to expand companies here, um, and to, to keep talent here. And so that's why I do believe, um, you know, 5G is a really important part of the infrastructure discussion, and I think you're going to continue to see it. But, uh, and it goes along with tax reform, regulatory reform. Now we've got to get focused, I think, on talent development. That's the other thing. I, I, I couldn't agree anymore. I, um, uh, the one thing I have to I have to slide in about infrastructure for us is that our companies are ready to invest 275 billion of their own, and so what we need are just new rules. We don't need money, so we're a little bit right. different than the rest of the infrastructure package that the administration had talked about or or has been thrown around in Congress. So uh, we just need you guys to unleash us, and we'll spend our own money. Well, I, w I will tell you that uh, that. That is something that we've been trying to do, and I will give the Trump administration credit. They have been trying to make it easier to do business in this country. They have tried to roll back those regulations and rules that are really getting in your way. Um, and I you know, think that uh, Ajit Pai and what he's doing in the FCC, they are hopefully trying. They're listening to business. We've got to make sure that we're business friendly. Obviously, in government, we're always trying to make sure we're protecting the safety and security and privacy of our citizens. Equally important. But but uh, we've got to we've got to get out of your way. Mm -hmm. That's right. We need to make sure that the the future of all of our um, energy or transportation or um, education is not exported to other companies. So we really do need this leadership. Really is important. Um, we had a study that showed that it was a hundred billion dollars that was added to the United States economy because we won the race to four G. So um, we're we're counting on you and your colleagues. Um, one thing I can't let you go without asking, I think, um, we're sitting up here, we're two women, and that's really unique, and I think it's, it's becoming more regular. I don't know if you knew this, but all the heads of the wireless industry in Washington, D.C., of the carriers are women. Oh. Um, but I do think it's important, um, really, to talk about how can we teach and attract more more future women leaders to wireless and tech. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it, so I thought I'd go ahead and ask. Well, um, and I'm really proud to co-chair the Women in High Tech uh, Coalition with Susan Del Bene, um, uh, an incredible tech pioneer herself um, from the state of Washington. Um, but I will tell you, we, we have to start at a young age with girls, um, and we have to continue to encourage them from a very young age. I think we know that a lot of studies show that girls are very excited about a young age, but come middle school, high school, they start to fade away from it. And so to the extent that your own companies um, bring uh, families and bring girls and bring you know uh, groups in to learn about um, what you do, I think that's critically important. Um, whether it is apprenticeships with high schools, um, middle school is probably a little young, but um, and then continuing those apprenticeships with colleges and universities, and don't forget your community colleges, and making sure that these people see and understand what you have to offer. Um, I think then, and, and just continuing to re reward girls and women um, who stay in this space, it's critically important, and, uh, but I do think we still have a long way to go. Um, but it's awesome that, that you're leading CTIA and having role models and people like this and supporting those types of efforts, I think will pay off in the long run. And if there are any of you back there in high heels and you're not comfortable, there are a couple extra chairs up here. <laughs> yeah. so feel free to come on up. There's some extra chairs. Or even if you're not in high heels, please feel free to come forward. Um, okay, we have 43 seconds left. So um, sadly, this has gone by so fast. You're so fun. Um, 
Okay, uh, a simple question for the last. As a member of Congress, you're truly on the road, on the plane, and I suppose on your phone all of the time. Yeah. So my final set of questions is, how many wireless devices do you use regularly, and what app can you not live without? Well, that's uh, actually, I do live on my phone. I only have one phone, but I, and I also have my iPad. But um, it is amazing. It's the first thing you wake up and scroll through. Of course, there's always a lot going on here. Uh, a little bit of chaos in this town once in a while. Um, less at home, I would say, but always you know, need to see what's happening. Uh, and I would, believe it or not, because sometimes, and some of you who maybe travel a lot, on occasion, you might wake up and go, OK, what city am I in? Am I in? Where am I? And actually, what's the weather? You know, critically important, even though we're uh, stuck um, often in the Capitol all day or over in our office buildings, we can I can go in there at 8 in the morning sometimes and not leave until about 7 at night. But um, you know, I would say, uh, and then when I'm at home and I don't get the opportunity to drive that much, I need that map you know, to, to just help me uh, maneuver. So those are probably the more functional ones and but I am very proud to say that I was an early snapchat adopter um, <laughs> which always cracks up see the young people are all laughing this is why I did it my kids uh, when I went to Congress were 18 and 21 and um, and now they're 24 and 27 and so I've always tried to learn because I don't have kids at home anymore and so how do they how do I communicate with them how do I stay up how do I you know educate them with what I'm doing as a member of Congress and so so my kids and uh, my comms person taught me how to use Snapchat, and which makes all young people really nervous when someone my age is using it. But I was really proud because I actually taught Elise Stefanik, the youngest woman in Congress, and Carlos Cabello, a really young, hip guy in Congress, how to use Snapchat. And they're like, wow, she can do it. We better start doing it. Um, but I really do enjoy and love Snapchat whenever I'm with kids or young people, and I pull it out, the snickers, the laughing, it's perfect, and I love it. So it's probably my favorite. So guys, you can tell we start from a really great place. Thanks. I'm so appreciative of you being here. I'm appreciative of what you're doing for 5G, um, wanting to win the race and understanding the global stakes. Uh, I hope everyone can feel the need to act at this point. Uh, I'm encouraged by, by everything that I hear from you. I'm encouraged by every level of government, what we see, and um, I'm really glad for Indiana. I think it's a great example that we can all look towards for action and results. So um, key action for this year is sighting and spectrum. Mm -hmm. So with your help, I'm sure we're gonna be a success and I really appreciate what you're doing and your service and your being here. Thank you, thanks everybody and go Pacers. <laughs>